Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ange if you haven't met me before and today we're gonna make some moss poles. So I'm really sorry that I haven't uploaded this week. I've been actually feeling a little bit sick. So if my voice sounds funny, that is why. I am drinking my tea and just chilling at home, trying to get better. So anyway, I have never made moss poles before, but I've watched quite a few videos on how to make moss poles. So I thought I would give it a go, take you guys along with me. If this is a massive fail, then I'm so, so sorry, but you can watch my fail then. So I did pick up a few supplies from Bunnings about a week ago. And the first thing you're gonna need to make a moss pole is obviously your moss. So this one was just a block of sphagnum moss that I have pre-soaked in a little bit of water and I drained out the excess. I've let it soak for about 10 minutes or so before I drained it off and it's just like wet now and soft. It comes as like this dry moss and you want it to be nice and soft. The next thing you're gonna need is some poles. So I have two different kinds. I have a longer, oops, sorry, I just hit cash in the face. So I have a longer wooden poles and I have a shorter, and I have a shorter plastic pole. I'm not sure how much moss I'm going to have in relation to the poles, but because I'm a bit sick, I'm just staying at home. So I'm not picking up any more moss. So we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna start off with making one with wood. I would have preferred to get all of them in plastic or these PVC pipes, but they didn't have the size I wanted in these pipes and I have no way to cut it. So we're gonna go with wood, but I know that wood might rot at some point in time. I know it's gonna take a while, but you know, we'll deal with that problem when it comes. The next thing you're gonna need is some meshing. So this is a plastic meshing that's just in the garden section. And this is what's going to actually keep all of the moss attached to the pole. And then the last thing you'll need is some zip ties. So again, I just picked these up from Bunnings. So let's get started. Let's see how this goes and let's hope it's not a fail. All right, so I am on my dining room table about to make this moss pole. So we have the netting and I've just put the pole on top of the netting for now. And also when you're making a moss pole, you don't actually need to put moss on the whole pole because this section is the area that's actually gonna stick into the soil. So now I've just gotta figure out how thick I want my moss pole to be. So I'm just gonna estimate, estimation is fine. I'm going to maybe have about two inches of netting on either side. And then I'm going to cut just along this line so we have a smaller piece of netting. So now we have a smaller bit of netting to work with around the size that I want moss pole to be. If it's a little bit too big, I'm going to trim it later. Lay flat. So now let's just start laying the moss on top of the netting. I am hoping that this works out. So I'm going to take some moss and I'm gonna wring out the excess water to it. And I'm gonna have the moss not super duper thick, but maybe like a half a centimeter thick across the netting. Just like that. Can you tell that I'm not a DIYer? This is not my jam, but you know, we gonna give it a go. So putting your vining plant across a moss pole is gonna stimulate its natural environment, help it grow nice bigger leaves, and also just make it a little bit more manageable so we don't have to keep trimming it. So I've heard that you wanna keep the moss pole moist. And for all those people that love that word, you wanna keep it moist so that the aerial roots of the plant will actually keep um, attaching to the pole. So we will see how lazy I am and if I'm actually going to do that. All right, so I feel like I've got an even layer of moss across the whole amount of netting. You can see that, yeah, it's about half a centimeter thick and there's no holes anywhere, which I think, I think we're good. So now I'm just gonna lay my stick down, lining it up at the top so you can see that. And then we've got a little bit of extra room to actually just pop that into the soil. 
So I'm just gonna trim a little bit of extra netting off because I think that it's actually a bit too wide. You know, we live, we learn. We're experimenting here. So you can watch me fail. Therefore you can do it maybe a little bit easier. All right, so I took off a little bit of extra plastic and now we're gonna go back to wrapping this guy like a little burrito. So I'm going to take my zip tie and I'm going to pop them just here. I'm gonna zip tie every fifth hole and we'll see how that goes, see if it's secure or not. I've seen people doing this with fishing line and stuff as well, but this seems like the easier option. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> So I feel like every fourth one isn't that secure, so I'm going to get a little bit of yarn, twine, string, whatever this is, and tie in between as well, just to make it all nice and tight. I would use zip ties, but I feel like I'm going to run out, <laughs> and I want to make a few more poles today to put in my other plants, so let's just do that. Oh, this is looking pretty secure, so now what we're going to do is we're going to trim off all these little plastic ends and these little yarn strings. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to make a few more off camera and then I am going to add some into my plants. Okay, so I finished making the moss balls. Oh gosh, I have moss <laughs> all over my shirt. That's fine. So I made three moss poles. So this is the first one. My favorite one is definitely the plastic one. I think it looks the best. So some things I learned while making them. Get a lot more zip ties than I did. I only got one packet and I got like the normal size zip tie. I'd probably get the mini one. I think that that would work a little bit better. I would also recommend using the zip ties because they were a lot less time consuming than tying the, the yarn. It, that took a lot longer. So get more zip ties, get the thin ones and get a lot of them. Also, I used about three quarters of one block of sphagnum moss and I thought that wouldn't be enough and I still have extra moss. So you don't actually need that much moss to make these moss poles unless you're making like thick, thick poles, but I assume I made normal size poles. So now we're actually going to put a moss pole into a plant. So let's do it. So the plant I'm actually gonna be adding a moss pole into is this Raphidophora. Tetrasperma and it is big. It's way bigger than this tiny little stick I put it on. So I'm just gonna get the stick out. So I thought that giving a stick to support a plant would be, you know, all good. It didn't need a moss pole. But I noticed that the plant didn't really attach itself to the stick because I guess it's not like moist. So it wasn't really doing much of anything. So that's why I kind of wanted to invest in putting a pole in there instead. So it's got just one massive vine and then inside the pot, I propagated it a little bit more and it has a few others. So I'm just gonna lay them, lay them against the pole, I guess. So I'm gonna take my pole. I don't know how this is gonna stay up. Like, it's very precarious, but we will see. I might have to repot it in the springtime um, soon, but we'll see how this goes first. I'm pretty much gonna lay, <laughs> you can't see me. I'm pretty much gonna lay the Raphidophora against the moss pole and try and get the aerial roots to kind of press against it. And I'm going to use a little bit of my string again to kind of tie them together. So I'm just gonna tie the string around the pole and my raffidophora 
Raphidophora. Is it Raphidophora or Raphidophora? I, I don't know. I always say it differently every single time. I think this plant is going to be so much happier with something to climb up because it was starting to attach to my wall in my kitchen and I'm renting and it was like making all these marks on the wall. So I was like, I go give this something to climb up. I'm so sorry that you can't see me. This plant is too big. Oh my goodness, this is looking so stinking cute. Look at that, it's massive. So you can see my dishes drying here, sorry, but it is huge. Oh my gosh, it's looking so cute. So yeah, I just tied it up with some twine and hopefully it attaches to the moss pole soon. Next plant that I'm putting a moss pole in is my Syngonium. So you probably saw this in my underrated plants video. If you haven't checked it out yet, I will link it up at the top for you. But again, I have this put on a stick and it's not doing much. So I'm going to cut off the ties from the stick and give it its own little moss pole to go onto. I'm hoping that it helps the leaves mature because as a Syngonium matures, it gets these little lobes on the leaves. They get super cute. So I'm hoping that that will happen if this has something to climb up. Gonna add in the moss pole. I'm literally just sticking it in the hole that, you know, was in there before. I know I have to repot this guy soon as well. It dries out so quickly. Um, I know it's in terracotta, so it dries out quicker than normal, but this is just like, I have to water it every few days and it's kind of annoying. It's quite large, so I have to take it to my shower and it's just, it's a, it's a whole big deal that I cannot be bothered to deal with. Right, question, when you guys are putting your plants on poles, like a vining plant, do you wrap them around or do you just lay them flat? Like I'm not great at mounting things. I would love to know any tips that you have to make this look cuter because I honestly don't know what to do. So Syngonium is now done on its moss pole, looking cute. It has a lot of areas to grow. It's not that stable, but it's propped against a wall. So that is totally fine. I'm really excited about this. I think that looks so much cuter than it used to be. So that is it for this video today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, then please hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, then hit subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. All right, bye.